Hello, child of God. Remember when the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross between the two convicted thieves? One thief mocked him for being on the cross, and the other thief asked Jesus to remember him when Jesus came into his kingdom. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now this convicted thief was not baptized in water. He had not repented or paid tithes or joined the church or given to the poor. And there was no fruit of his becoming a Christian. But God with us, Emmanuel, the Word of God, Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Most High God, had said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. This is like a deathbed prayer of a horrible sinner, and it flies in the face of a lot of religious doctrines of men today. This thief on the cross seemed to have more revelation knowledge about the kingdom of God than all the disciples put together. At the foot of the cross, there were many witnesses and disciples of Jesus struggling to understand and comprehend why Almighty God allowed the suffering and death of His only begotten Son. The disciples had preached, saying, The kingdom of God has come upon you. And the disciples had demonstrated the kingdom of God with miracles, signs, and wonders manifested by the power of the Holy Spirit. But at the crucifixion, they were stunned and confused and had to be convinced by the Lord Jesus Christ that this was Almighty God's plan. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So who is the Holy Spirit? There are many people on the earth that do not know who the Holy Spirit really is. In the beginning, in the darkness before time and creation, Almighty God existed and divided himself into three different manifestations. We call these manifestations God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit divided himself into seven manifestations. God is an intentionally invisible God to us. When God says there is only one God and no one beside him, the manifestation is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in total agreement like a jug full of water. The three different manifestations are like pouring this same water into three similar glasses. It is all the same God family in different manifestations. When you try to focus closely on one manifestation, you'll see all three. And when you focus on all three separate manifestations, you'll see one undivided God. We are like tiny ants or bees trying to understand cell phone technology in comparison. Almighty God's ways and his thoughts are higher than ours, even as the heavens are above the earth. We just do not have the mental ability to understand how Almighty God came into existence from nothingness. And we do not have the mental ability to understand how the entire universe came into being from nothingness. We do exist, and we see that the universe does exist. And our most popular, but not our smartest, scientists make their educated theories on how the universe defied all the laws of physics and came into existence out of nothingness without being created by Almighty God. When they take their science to this level, it is just human faith in a voodoo creation theory. My faith is in the God that I do not understand, creating the entire universe, including us. Which brings us to the Son of God, whom also is called the Word of God. From the darkness before the creation, he spoke two words in faith, light be, and instantly the universe was created. The Holy Spirit began working in the universe to manifest the eternal plan of God. Let us jump ahead into his plan, to Jesus dying on the cross. The disciples could have been told to stay at the cross and get everything God wants to give you when you're saved by the blood of Jesus. But Jesus told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Spirit. So they did. And what was evident was the overwhelming joy of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Jesus is one manifestation of God and the Holy Spirit is another different manifestation. Just as Jesus was manifested as the Word of God, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Lamb of God, and many other manifestations, the Holy Spirit manifests Himself in many different ways. 
Just as Jesus needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that God would perform miracles through him and preach in power, we also need to obey the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ and continue from the cross to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is not Jesus because Jesus is living in his resurrection body and seated on his throne in heaven beside Almighty God the Father. The Holy Spirit is a real living God person that represents the Lord Jesus Christ on earth. He is the power that heals the sick. He's the power that raises the dead. He is the power that casts out all the demons. He is the God person that can create and destroy. Sometimes our actions grieve him and wound him, and sometimes our love of God gives him great joy. Just how do you think he feels when he hears preachers preaching against him? He is the spirit of prophecy, but they refuse to allow prophecy in the church. And there are many preachers and elders that lay hands on the sick and pray for them. But unless God shows his mercy on the sick, the sick are not healed because the elders refuse to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and therefore have rejected his power to heal. They certainly want the power of God in the church, but they want it on their own terms. Sometime after the announcements, after the singing, after the sermon, and after the offering, and sometime after everyone bows their head in a seeker-friendly silent, silent? Prayer for salvation. The pastor announces, Oh, we got two minutes left before we close the service. Are there any sick that need to be prayed for? Yes, I am mocking Dr. Unbelief. But the message is clear. If there is no active demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit showing signs and wonders in the church, then that congregation needs to repent and that congregation needs to obey the command of the Lord Jesus Christ to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Out of roughly two billion Christians in the world, roughly one-fourth have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in speaking tongues. Signs and wonders and miracles are the work of the Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus and draw all men to him. The gifts of the Spirit are some of the signs and wonders that follow Christians. Listen to this question. Do you want to be like the thief that died on the cross, barely escaping the fires of hell? Or do you want to be a productive, obedient ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ on earth? The difference between the unproductive thief that was saved and the ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ is the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he took his blood to the altar in heaven, and then he took his seat beside Almighty God the Father. But then he asked the Father to send the Holy Spirit to the church. And the Father sent the Holy Spirit, and it's God's will for each of us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Just as the Holy Spirit was aggressive and baptized the 120 in the upper room, and just as the Holy Spirit was aggressive and baptized the household of Cornelius while Peter was still preaching the gospel, the Holy Spirit is aggressive to baptize you now, wherever you are. If you believe the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, that's unearned and undeserved, then you should also believe the Lord Jesus Christ for the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, unearned and undeserved. Let you and I pray together now. Just follow after me and you speak the words out as I do. Just follow after me and pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, I pray that you forgive my every sin and I forgive everyone their trespasses against me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Make me your child. I ask you now, to baptize me in the Holy Spirit as you promised and give me the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Cause me to grow and be the fruitful child of Almighty God that you want me to be. Teach me about the Lord Jesus Christ according to your holy words. And now I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You have asked and received because the words of God are true. The Holy Spirit is speaking to your spirit and not to your ears in a language that you do not know. Just speak out whatever sounds you hear. He will let you know when you are speaking in the gift of speaking in other tongues. Do not be afraid. It's the Holy Spirit. Just speak out the words you hear in your spirit.